I'm Steve for This Hook With Cars, and today I have this 1967 Austin Cooper S. This car hasn't been running for about eight years, so who knows what we're going to encounter as we try to get this back on the road. Let's take a look around it. The first thing that's obvious is the fender flares on the side. It does have a little bit wider tires than normal. And it also has hood pins holding the hood on. This is not a fiberglass hood, this is a steel one. One thing that I like a lot on these cars is these knobs that allow you to take the grill out quickly. Gives you really good access to things like the distributor, which we're probably going to have to work on on this one. On the inside, we have some non-standard seats in the front. The original seats would match these that are in the rear. It's faded and you can hardly see it now, but that is a gold brocade pattern on the inserts of these seats. We also have a non-standard steering wheel. Some wood paneling has been added to the dashboard and heater. The headliner looks nice and in original condition. This is a neat idea. I haven't seen this before. This is the last time that it was fueled up. So we know in November of 2014 was the last time someone put fuel in here. The round back, these are not the correct taillights for this year of mini. Not sure if you have to cut the body to fit these on, but this is a somewhat common upgrade for someone that wants a little more light on the back of these cars. Let's take a look in the boot. First, you can see the dual gas tanks. So this car does have a fuel tank on both sides. There's just a car cover here on the top. Beneath that, we do have the spare tire and there's the battery. So I think I'll leave this tray out for now because I'm sure that I'm going to have to be accessing things in here. This car is wearing authentic mini light wheels. These tires are not sure that brand name, Kamek. These are a tire made in Portugal. Not sure how old these are. And this car does have the hydroelastic suspension. So you can see it's leaning to one side. So at some point we're going to have to pump that back up to get the car level. To open the bonnet, I will have to take the pins out. Under the bonnet is a 1275. Down here on the engine plate, it says 9FSA-Y. That means that this is a 1275 Cooper S engine. Over here is where the brake booster should be. You can see a little pipe here that's been put in to bypass it. I do have the brake booster. We will be putting that back in. But I want to make sure that everything like it is right now works before we go and add more complications to the car. Everything looks to be in pretty good order. We do still have fluid in the brake and clutch reservoirs. Someone has written five on the top of the cap, so this must be filled with dot five brake fluid. The first thing I'm going to do is put the battery on a battery charger. That way we can start turning things on and find out what works and what doesn't work. I suppose the first thing that we need to know is it, does it turn over or not? And I can bump the starter right here at the solenoid. Okay, the engine does turn over. Now let's turn the key and see what happens. Okay, I don't hear the fuel pump. It's not going to run if we don't have fuel and I don't hear the fuel pump running. I'm underneath the car now and over here by the exhaust is the fuel pump. Look at that fuel filter, that does not look good. So I will definitely need to replace that at some point. I have left the ignition on, so if the fuel pump starts to run, we should hear it. I'm just going to give it a few taps with the hammer and see if it comes back to life. There it goes. Can you hear it clicking now? We can see it pumping through the filter. Okay, the carbs must be up. Oh. It's a good sign that it has stopped. It means the carbs must be full of fuel now and they're not leaking everywhere. Let's check real quick to see if we have spark and I'll do that by connecting up my spark tester in line with one of the spark plugs. Now, if we do have spark, when I crank the engine, it'll flash right here. I have the ignition on and I'm going to turn it over with the solenoid in the engine. And I have the lights off so that we can see the spark real well. Okay, we do have ignition. Cranks over, has fuel, has spark. Should run. Pull the choke out a little bit. See what happens. If 
fired just slightly there at the end. Wants to. There we go. but at least it's running. It'll probably take a while for the engine to clear up. We have the engine running now, so the next thing we need is brakes and clutch. Feels like the brakes work and the clutch possibly is working, I can't really tell. It's pretty simple on a Mini to observe if the clutch is working. Let me pull this hose up out of the way. This is the clutch slave cylinder, and this is where it actuates onto the clutch arm. So when I push down on the clutch pedal, we should see this moving. I'll go do that now, and we'll be able to see if this is working at all. Okay, that was working. Let's try it under its own power. Start it back up. The ignition light went out, so I'm hoping it's charging the battery. Oil pressure looks good. See if it moves forward. Yep. Did the brakes work? Yep. Brakes work good. To continue our test, I think we need to see if it will drive out on the road. Make sure it has water in it. That looks good. The only tool I'm going to take with me is the hammer, just in case the fuel pump stops working, or I have an issue with one of the float valves. I didn't make it very far. It was almost a pop almost immediately. And here the fuel pump is running non-stop now. And I think the car actually ran out of fuel. You don't, there's not a whole lot of fuel there in the fuel filter. I did notice that the fuel gauge had read empty, but there's so many times that the fuel senders just don't work on these cars that I figured it wasn't working. I hope walking back to get fuel doesn't become a recurring theme on this channel. Looks like the fuel gauge was working. All right, it seems to be driving all right. I'm doing about 45 miles per hour now. The temperature's coming up. The oil pressure still looks good. I'm not going to go too far because the whole point is to see what works and what doesn't work. is already sounding a lot better. It's revving up like it should. I can tell that the valves are getting cleaned up. The engine's starting to run really well now. This has been a very successful day. I figured out a lot of things that do work and don't work on the car. We have a really big list of things to do next time. If you want to see more Austin Mini videos from me, comment below and click subscribe.